In this video, we will cover specifying the energy analysis mode and adjusting energy settings. In Revit, there are several settings you should specify before performing a systems analysis. On the Analyze ribbon, in the Energy Optimization panel, click Energy Settings. In the Energy Settings dialog, the first thing you should do is specify the mode. When you expand the drop-down, you can see that there are three options. However, be aware that Use Building Elements and Use Conceptual Masses are legacy modes. Select Use Conceptual Masses and Building Elements. Next, you can specify the ground plane, which is the level of your project that will be at the ground plane. You can also set a project phase for the analysis. If you wish to perform an analysis on various phases of the project, you can select that here. Next, you can control the analytical space and surface resolution. The analytical space resolution is the maximum distance between Revit elements that may be ignored. And the analytical surface resolution is the smallest dimension of any surface to be included in the energy model. Take note that reducing these values will increase the processing time required to create the energy model. Next, you can control the perimeter zone depth and whether or not the perimeter zone is divided. And then you can control the average vertical void height threshold and horizontal void chase area threshold. The average vertical void height threshold is the value used to avoid the application of unwanted thermal loads and properties to analytical spaces like ceiling voids and small vertical spaces such as closets and small storage spaces. The horizontal void chase area threshold is similar to the average vertical void height threshold. When an analytical space's area falls within this threshold, it will be assigned to the unconditioned zone equipment and excluded from any systems analysis. Next, click Edit next to Other Options to open the Advanced Energy Settings dialog. Here, you can control the target percentage glazing and the target percentage skylights. Take note that the other parameters are grayed out because they are legacy settings. Under Building Data, you can control the settings that are used for the InSight service. And then under Room Space Data, you can control the export category, which can be spaces or rooms. When either of these are created, this option controls what the analytical spaces are going to pull from, either the space information or the room information. Lastly, you can set the material thermal properties. By default, the conceptual types will be used. And then, when the schematic types are set to override the conceptual types, then those will be used. And when Detailed Elements is selected, then the information from the actual model elements will be used. Click OK to close each of these dialogs, and then zoom in and select a space. When you scroll down in the Properties palette to the Energy Analysis section, you can see several additional parameters. Take note that here you can control the space type and the construction type. You can also control people and electrical loads. When you click in the space type field, you can then click the More button. This opens the Space Type Settings dialog. Be aware that for the various types at the bottom, there are settings for the heating set point, cooling set point, and then the humidification and dehumidification set points. These are also important to specify 
when you're performing a systems analysis. In this video, we will cover creating system zones and editing system zones. System zones are used to designate areas of the building that will be served by specific analytical systems and zone equipment. To create a system zone, switch to the Analyze ribbon, and then in the Energy Optimization panel, click System Zone. When you do, Revit goes into Sketch Mode, and you can use any of the tools in the Draw Gallery to sketch shapes. Any space that is touching the shape or inside the shape will be included in the system zone. Let's take a look at a couple examples. With line selected, zoom in and sketch a line through the exam rooms and into the consulting room. And then press escape once. At this point we have a single sketch line that extends through five spaces. Click Finish Edit Mode. We now have a system zone, and you can see the properties in the Properties palette. System zones have a level and a level offset. Once again, anything that is touching the sketch line or that is inside the shape defined by the sketch line will be included in the system zone. And so you can control the level offset in order to move that boundary up or down. So in case you have spaces that are lower or higher, you may want to adjust this. You can also control the name. We'll leave it set to the default name for now. And then you can add comments. And then once you have zone equipment, you can select that in this dropdown. Next, I will click System Zone again, and in the Draw Gallery, select Rectangle. Now I'll zoom into the middle, and I'll sketch a rectangle that is inside the exam rooms as well as the consulting rooms. And then I'll click Finish Edit Mode again. At this point, I have a shape, that, in, and now I have these 10 rooms that will be included in this zone. Take note that if we need to edit a system zone, we can select it and click Edit System Zone. If I were to move this boundary to where it encloses these rooms, then it would also pass through the corridor, in which case the corridor would then be included in the system zone. So in case you're thinking that you need to enclose all the spaces, just be aware that anything that passes through it will also be included. And we'll take a look at that. When you're finished editing it, you can click Finish Edit Mode. And then once again, it remains selected. I will name uh, leave this one set to System Zone 1, and then I'll select this one, and we'll change the name to System Zone 2. And now we will take a look at how to see the analytical spaces that make up the zone. Because when you select it, you'll notice that you can't see any, any spaces in the zone. And so to do that, we will go back to the Energy Optimization panel and click Create Energy Model. And then in the dialog, I'll select Create the Energy Analytical Model, and we will let Revit process. When it's finished, there's a new view, which is the analytical spaces view. And then there's also a system zones view. But I'll switch back to the mechanical ground floor view. And then on the view ribbon, in the Windows panel, I'll expand the user interface button and select system browser. And then I'll expand the drop down and select analytical systems. And then when I expand on assigned, you can see System Zone 1 and System Zone 2, along with all of the other analytical spaces. And then when I expand the drop-down, you can see the analytical spaces that are included in the System Zone. So for System Zone 2, you can see the five analytical spaces, 
whereas for system zone one, you'll notice that there are several spaces. And so once again, it's not just the spaces that are inside that shape, but also anything that is, uh, that it's passing through, which in this case is the corridor, and the corridor has been split up into multiple analytical spaces. And that is based on the energy settings. So just to summarize, the system zones designate areas of the building that will be served by specific analytical systems and zone equipment. So you want to make sure that you have your system zone specified when you perform a systems analysis. In this video, we will cover defining analytical systems and editing analytical systems. When performing a system analysis, you can add analytical systems in order to model zone equipment, air systems, and water loops. Creating analytical systems is a great way to model systems and then perform analysis. This saves you from having to physically model those systems before you can analyze them. To do this, you need to open the system browser. On the View ribbon, in the Windows panel, expand the User Interface button and select System Browser. In this project, there are several system zones that have been created. If you do not see these, expand the drop-down at the top and select Analytical Systems. With Analytical Systems selected, there are tools to add zone equipment, air systems, and water loops. For this example, we'll begin modeling a VAV system that is supplied by chilled water air handling units. To begin, I'll click Add Zone Equipment in the System Browser. When I do, you can see that the Properties palette populates with a zone equipment, and there are some parameters. I will give it a name VAV1-1. When I do that, you can then see the system populate in the system browser. Next, I'll select the equipment type. And depending on the type, there will be several other parameters appear. For example, I'll select some different options and you can see that the parameters update in the properties palette. For this example, I'll select series fan powered box. Next, I can control the behavior, which is either one per space or group spaces on equipment. I'll select group spaces on equipment. Next, I can specify the heating coil. and I'll select electric resistance for this example. And then when I expand the air system drop-down, you can see that there aren't any options. And that's because we haven't created any analytical air systems yet. Next, you can select whether or not the zone equipment will draw ventilation. And this will specify whether the zone equipment provides ventilation or not. I'll leave this option selected for now. Now at this point, I have zone equipment VAV 1-1, and I also have system zone 1-1. If I select the system zone, you can see that it has a zone equipment parameter. I will select VAV1-1 for System Zone 1-1. When I do that, you can now see that VAV1-1 has a branch in the System Browser, and when I expand that, I can see all of the analytical spaces that are assigned to that System Zone. So let's take a look at one thing here. Right now, VAV1-1 is serving all the spaces on the Zone and that is because our behavior was to group the spaces on the equipment. If I wanted each space in that zone to have a VAV box, I could select one per space as the behavior. When I do that, you can now see that there are eight VAV1-1 uh, listings in the system browser. And so that is controlled by the behavior. So whether you want to group the spaces on the equipment or you want one per space, you can select that here. 
All right, let's continue on and we will create an air system. So in the system browser, I'll click add air system. And then once again, we have parameters in the properties palette. And I will enter AHU1 for the name. And then we have several options here. We can control the heat exchanger and I will select enthalpy. The options are enthalpy and sensible. I'll select enthalpy. Then for the preheat coil, I'll select electric resistance. And for the cooling coil, I'm going to select chilled water. And when I do that, we now have a chilled water loop parameter. And in order to add, uh, in order to have an option there, I need to create an analytical chilled water loop. And similarly for the heating coil, if I select hot water, I'll need a heating hot water loop. And then for the fan, I can select either constant volume or variable volume. I'll select variable. So continuing on here, let's create an analytical water loop. And I will name this chilled water. And the loop type is chilled water. And then for, a, for chilled water loops, you can control the chiller type. And so for this example, I'll leave it set to air cooled. Uh, if you haven't noticed by now, anytime you choose water cooled or what, any type of water loop, you'll need to create an analytical water loop. For now, we'll leave it set to air cooled. And then let's create one more uh, water loop and we'll name it heating hot water and the loop type will be hot water. Okay, so now I have a chilled water loop and a heating hot water loop. And so now when I go back to my AHU1, I can then expand the chilled water loop drop down and select my chilled water loop. And then similarly for the heating hot water loop. So as you can see, you create analytical systems and then you can assign certain systems to other systems to model real-world systems. So now if we go back to our zone equipment, VAV1-1, I now have an, an option for the air system, and I'll select AHU1. And so as you can see, this goes relatively quickly in creating zone equipment, air systems, and water loops. And so you can model the systems in your building and then analyze them. And that is a way to quickly analyze systems without having to physically model all of them. In this video, we will cover creating an energy analytical model and performing energy analysis. In this project, system zones have been created along with analytical systems you can see those in the system browser. On the view ribbon, in the Windows panel, expand the user interface button and select system browser. When you expand the listings, you can see all the analytical systems that have been created. Currently, there are not any analytical spaces because the energy analytical model has not yet been created. To do that, switch to the Analyze ribbon, and then in the Energy Optimization panel, click Create Energy Model. This opens a dialog that says Create Energy Model may take considerable time. Depending on the settings that are specified in the Energy Settings dialog, this process may take a while or it may not take much time at all. It also depends on the size of your project. Once you are ready to create the energy analytical model, click Create the Energy Analytical Model. When the energy analytical model is created, the Analytical Spaces view opens, and you can see the analytical spaces that have been created. Be aware that you can select analytical spaces. When you do, you can see the instance properties in the Properties palette. Additionally, in the System Browser, when you expand some of the listings, 
for the zone equipment, you can see the analytical spaces. Those are the spaces that are a part of the system zone that the zone equipment is serving. You can take a look at the system browser to take a detailed look at all of the analytical spaces that have been created. You can also use the analytical spaces view to fully analyze all of the analytical spaces in the project. Once you are ready to perform an energy analysis, on the Analyze ribbon, in the Energy Optimization panel, click Systems Analysis. This opens the Systems Analysis dialog. There are two options here for the analysis workflow, Annual Building Energy Simulation and HVAC Systems Loads and Sizing. You can select either option. For this example, we'll select HVAC Systems Loads and Sizing. You can then enter a report name, and that report will then be available in the project browser. I'll enter HVAC Loads and then click Run Analysis. A dialog appears stating that the systems analysis is calculating in the background. Since it's a background process, you can continue working in Revit. Once the analysis is complete, you can open the report and analyze the results. In this video, we will cover specifying conceptual types and schematic types and assigning material thermal properties. When performing an energy analysis, it's important that the correct thermal properties are used. We'll take a look at how these are assigned. On the Analyze ribbon, in the Energy Optimization panel, click Energy Settings, and then click Edit next to Other Options. In the Advanced Energy Settings dialog, you can control the material thermal properties. There are three options here, Conceptual Types, Schematic Types, and Detailed Elements. Let's start with Conceptual Types. When you click Edit, the Conceptual Types dialog opens. As you can see, there is a Mass Model column and a Constructions column. When you expand the drop-down, you can select one of the constructions for each of the options. The conceptual types will be used by default. Click Cancel to close the dialog, and then click in the Schematic Types field and click the More button. In this dialog, you can create schematic types. As you can see, there is a message at the top that says analysis properties are generated from information in conceptual types and then the properties of schematic types are used when override is selected. So if you select override in one of the rows, for example roofs, then the roofs schematic type will be used and you can select the option in the analytical construction column. Once again, you can expand the drop-down and select one of the options. If you want to use schematic types make sure that Override is selected. And then once again, you can specify the schematic types that will be used. In the list, you can see the options along with the U value. I'll click OK to close the dialog, and then we have Detailed Elements. When Detailed Elements is selected, then the thermal properties for the actual model elements will be used. Now, depending on whether, really if you use this option, you need to pay attention to what model elements are being used. And in other words, what wall types and roof types and floor types were used and to make sure that the thermal properties have been specified correctly. I'll select Detailed Elements and then click OK 
to close the Advanced Energy Settings dialog, and then click OK again to close the Energy Settings dialog. To take a look at the Model Elements Thermal Properties, we can look at the Type Properties. So right now we're working with a linked architectural model, and so if I enable Select Links, I can then zoom in, hover over a wall, and press Tab to highlight the wall, and then click to select the wall. With the wall selected, I'll click Edit Type to open the Type Properties dialog. And then when I scroll down to the Analytical Properties, you can see the U values and R values uh, for the wall, as well as the thermal mass, absorptance, and roughness values. And so really you want to make sure that these are valid and that they've been specified correctly. Additionally, you can click Edit next to Structure to see the structure of the wall, or if it's a roof, the roof, or a floor, a floor, and so on and so forth. Here you can see the materials that make up the layers of the assembly. At the top of the dialog, you can also see the, the, the resistance and the thermal mass. If you want to take a closer look, you notice that you cannot click in the material field in order to click the More button, and that's because we're working with a linked architectural model. And so if you want to go more in depth, you would actually need to open the, the link, and you can't open a link that's currently linked to the host model, otherwise it'll remove it. And so you could close your project and then open up the linked architectural model. I'll click Cancel to close each of these dialogs. And then, just to see what we'd be looking for, I'll switch to the Manage ribbon. And then in the Settings panel, I'll click Materials. In the Material Browser, you can select a material. And then, in the Material Editor, you can look for the Thermal tab. The Thermal tab will be available if a thermal asset has been added. So for the acoustic ceiling tile, we can see that there is a thermal asset applied, and we can take a look at the details, such as the thermal conductivity, the specific heat, density, so on and so forth. If I flip through some of the other options, you can see that not every single one has a thermal asset added, and so this is what you'd want to be looking for to make sure that those thermal assets are, are available. And if the wrong one is added, you can always replace the asset and select another one that's in the list or that's, that's available to you. So once again, you can use the conceptual types, schematic types, or you can use the actual thermal properties on the model elements. And so before you run an energy analysis, you need to make sure that you understand what's being used for your material properties. In this video, we will cover reviewing energy analysis reports and reviewing calculated values. To begin, let's review the process of performing a systems analysis. On the Analyze ribbon, in the Energy Optimization panel, there are several tools. You should begin by specifying the energy settings. After that, you can create system zones. Then you can create analytical systems. To do that, you need to be in the system browser. On the View ribbon, in the Windows panel, expand the User Interface button and select System Browser. With analytical systems selected, you can see the analytical systems that have been created in the project. Once you create system zones and analytical systems, you can create the energy analytical model. Back on the Analyze ribbon in the Energy Optimization panel, there's a tool that you can use to create the energy analytical model. In this exercise, the energy analytical model has already been created, so the tool says Delete Energy Model. If you make changes, you can delete the energy analytical model 
and then create it again to incorporate those changes. So once you specify the energy settings, create system zones and analytical systems, and then create the energy analytical model, you can perform a systems analysis. When you click systems analysis, the systems analysis dialog opens, and you can see that there are two options, annual building energy simulation and HVAC systems loads and sizing. In this exercise, both of those have already been performed. I'll click Cancel and then scroll down in the project browser. Under Reports, you can see that there are two analysis reports. I'll open each one. Let's begin by looking at the annual building energy simulation report. To begin, you can see the annual overview and several charts, and then a monthly overview and a couple charts here. Then there's a detailed report section, and if we scroll down we can see the table of contents. And here you can see the various report headings, and you can click one of these options to switch to that, uh, that section of the report. Next I'll switch to the HVAC systems loads and sizing report, and this one begins with the detailed report. And you'll note, uh, notice that at the top, several of these are set to zero. And just be aware of which report you're viewing. So the HVAC systems loads and sizing does not do an annual building energy simulation. And so that's why a lot of these are zero here at the top, uh, because they deal with the annual energy use. But when we scroll down, we can see the table of contents and then we can review the sections that are specific to the HVAC loads and sizing. For example, I'll click HVAC sizing summary, and in this section of the report we can see the analytical spaces, and we can see information such as calculated design load, uh, calculated design airflow, and so on and so forth, and we can review that for the analytical spaces. If you haven't noticed already, these reports are, are quite long, and so it'll take, it'll take some time to review these reports in depth, but you can become familiar with what information is there and what information you need to review. Next, I'm going to switch back to the Analytical Spaces view, and when I select an analytical space, I can see the Properties in the Properties palette, and I can see some of that information that we saw in the report. For example, in the mechanical flow area, I can see the airflow per area, air changes per hour, outdoor airflow per area per person, so on and so forth. And then under energy analysis, I can see additional information such as the peak heating and cooling load, and then the, the lighting load, power load, and then the set points. And so this is all valuable information that we would need to look at when we are designing a mechanical system for this building. So, once again, you can review the report, you can review the analytical space instance parameters and help you uh, begin your design process. Next, let's expand schedules quantities and open the analytical spaces schedule and then we'll click Edit next to Fields. This schedule is created along with the an energy analytical model, but we can come back and we can add additional information to this schedule. And we can also adjust the order as we need to. For example, uh, let's put the room name at the top, and then let's add the airflow per area, and then let's also add the peak cooling load and peak heating load. And then I'll click OK and we'll take a look at the schedule. So once again, just to summarize, there's a lot of information in the report, but we can also use the instance parameters that are then calculated in the model 
and we can review those in the analytical spaces, and we can also review those in a schedule.